even in the second season, we're, we're still, for, for, I would say pretty much for all of it, but to a lesser extent later in it, um, very, very much trying to get back to Earth. I think there comes a certain point, though, when uh, everyone realizes that this is actually an opportunity, that, that all the stuff that we're surrounding here and all the secrets that, that uh, this ship might be holding might be worth actually fighting for. It might actually be worth something um, sacrificing for. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, we've been here for a year, and um, and uh, it's become home for us too as actors. It's become a it's become a very cozy is the wrong word, but um, I don't know. We, we step in here, and I think all of us feel a little more in our element actually than than we do uh, when we go out on location. I mean, this just feels like home base. I think from the beginning, uh, I think Scott's story has been one of, of um, growth, hopefully, sometimes growing, sometimes taking a few steps back. I think tapping, um, tapping his, uh, his potential. Um, and we, we see that continue in, in, the, in the second season. Uh, I think he, in my head, I think he's slowly starting to find a, a family here. You know, he's he's always been someone who didn't have a family, and he's got a dad now. Speaking Hello, of everyone. Who he is. Hello. We're spending more time in these characters than you are in your real world. And I realize, you know, I, I'm an actor. I've been around for 25 years, and you do a project for two, three months, you inhabit that space, and then it's gone. It's it's over with. You're moving on, and now you inhabit another part of you. So to spend two years in this sort of setting and this dynamic with these characters' mindsets has been really uh, challenging, for lack of a better word. I think it's 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 a real interesting dynamic. As soon as you step onto the set, you immediately have, for me, there's a sense of, uh, of, of uh, there's a weight, there's a, there's a desperation, there's an anxiety, there's a, there's, um, it, it's not like coming home in any way. It's like, but that is so interesting, yeah. because the way I answered the question is, it, is and maybe it's me starting to reflect Scott's experience a little bit, is this is actually this is coming home for you, yeah. a little bit more like, hey, I'm in my element yeah. when I walk in here, which is kind of Yeah, well, no, but bizarre. that kind of makes sense. Yeah. I think it is great. And I think that, for me, it, the, fa the reason it is not is because it, 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 it can never be at home. And not just for me. I'm aware that there's, I'm aware, I mean, you'd have to be a fool not to understand that uh, as much as Rush wants to stay, that the majority of people would love to be home with their loved ones in their own space, in their own beds, having their own, all the things that have been taken away from them. I mean, who are we kidding? So, uh, it's home in the perspective that this is, the, the character is easier to inhabit, but the actual headspace sometimes is like, oh God, I gotta go into that thing again, if that makes sense. It's dark. Yeah. yeah, it's dark. One of the things that I've always liked about the creation of the show was that we were both we were always meant to be the protagonist and the antagonist, and that, that duality in life, to me, is what makes us beautiful. You can't have the good without the bad, the dark without the light, and that's that's true of every person on the ship. So there's going to be times where everyone should question. You're going to, you know, as as you would in real life. This is not about characters trying to be liked on a TV show. These are people trying to uh, create a, a real situation. I think in the first season, it, it became so much for him is I will do whatever I've got to do to get back so I can be a father to that kid. It's the, it's the chance that I've got now to be a family man, to create the family that I never had growing up. I mean, Scott, if you look at him, he's a guy who you know was very, very young. Both of his parents are killed. When he's 16, the, the guy that's raising him dies of alcoholism, interestingly enough, you know, mm -hmm. as far as yeah. our relationship goes with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and then he, in his mind, for a long time, was involved in the abortion of a child, which for a slightly, uh, probably more than slightly, religious person is a very, very, very heavy blow. And so I think now he, he realizes too late that he's got this chance to, uh, to be a dad. Um, and I think a lot of first season is, is subconsciously, how do I get back to that? How do I get back to that? And season two is about, am I still trying to get back to there, or do I need to reconcile myself with what I've got here and make the most out of this? The biggest moment for Young, I think, in that whole season one was the baby. Underneath oh, yeah. all that armor, underneath all that wall, underneath all that, like, trained military man who's been programmed was uh, a man who never had a chance to have a child, who lost his love, blew that, 
had another chance at love, I blew that, and then this life represents a spark, a light that's gone. This man is, you know, started off very much like the movie, The Kurt Russell. I think the first thing he's doing is like thinking about suicide. And almost had that time, that original Stargate film. He starts off in a very, very dark place. That was the light that was gonna come to. That would be, that would be the best possibility. Even though he'd be very weary of wanting to raise a child under these circumstances, the idea of it has huge implications for him. And, uh, and, and, and uh, almost like a saving grace, if you will in his own mind, obviously. And that's why I think the relationship with Scott was kind of almost parental, in that he's almost the son that he, he didn't have and wish he had, and loves everything about him in that very first season as far as his own, his character and all that stuff. You know, and there's that, there is that relationship there. The dynamic was the colonel is the, is, the, is the number one man, and he's under the colonel, and that was the dynamic. Not so much a worship thing, just the respect that's inherently taught in that, in that military situation. And one of the elements that I love about it is that everything that necessarily, those rules don't necessarily apply anymore when you're floating in a tin can in the middle of nowhere, time is passing by, you've been stripped of everything, you start questioning your own identity. So as we go into season two, we start getting more into the depths of their minds and the psychology behind everyone and how that impacts every, all, the, all the relationships, if that makes any sense. So I think yeah. it's just, you know. Yeah, I feel I, I I totally feel what you're saying there. It's like we have to now that we're out here in this uh, um, really 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 isolated environment, so we, ha we have to reinvent these relationships, and we have to reinvent what the what the military relationship is to civilians. We have to reinvent the, uh, what what the command structure out here means. You know, yeah. how fluid is it, or how how strict does it need to be?